you know, uh, yesterday. He just like glided across the pitch, and I just thought he just looked also classy. He's a great player. It's it's interesting. It's something we haven't seen before. Uh, it is the match preview. I am joined um, not just by myself, uh, but on couch number one by Steve Hall and by Chris Pajak. Really who were both the looking toilet, didn't absolutely you? resplendent. Everyone thought I was in the toilet. Yeah. It's it's weeks week. We probably should have told the guest there was two toilets in the building because I think he was waiting for me to come back. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you guys are obviously ready, willing and able to preview Liverpool versus Brentford, of course, aren't you, gents? Oh, I can't yeah, wait. Absolutely. It's one of my made for me. Yeah. Brilliant. And then on couch number two, um, we have <laughs> 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 Ben and Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> who are also uh, ready, willing, and able to preview uh, Liverpool versus Brentford. Um, Nick, as the morning who's most refreshed amongst us. Um, <laughs> look, it's just one of those games, isn't it? I mean, there's not there's not tons to say about it beyond just got to keep the run going. That's we're, we're playing for vibes at the bare minimum. You know, probably Europa League, maybe Champions League, but in reality, it's about playing for people feeling in a boss mood when the end of the season. Brentford little bit there you know we've had a couple of bad results against them away from home mm -hmm. um trying to put a, that right will definitely aid the course yeah coming away from the game uh last night you know those even though the game itself was a bit of a hard watch like the lads walking back to the car we were kind of like yeah our five kickoff Saturday fancy that we'll go have a few beers afterwards like the the atmosphere was a little bit lifted and I just feel like that clean sheet as well just gives us something to build on a little bit and I want to see Trent play in this position more. I want to see what he can do the more he's in there. So I'm actually looking forward to the game. And uh, listen, I I'm resign myself to Europa League football next season. As Ian said earlier, get me to Dublin. I'm all <laughs> over that. I feel like booking an easy jet as soon as they come on sale. So yeah, yeah I think I think optimism's picked up a little bit. I think now it's just a case of let's just keep this win and run going. Win every game to the end of the season. And then what happens? What happens? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly that's exactly right, isn't it? Ian? Is that if you do that and you do get Europe, there will be a sense of disappointment, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But at least you get to go. Okay, well, look, a problem was identified. They found the cut-off point, and you're starting to look at next season's Liverpool, and you can imagine what they're going to look like. Whereas I mean, we've been saying for a few weeks, if you continue that up and down form, the net result might be the same. You might have still ended up in the in the Europa League. You know, who knows? But you'd be thinking, oh God. <laughs> What team is going to come back in the in the new season? Yeah, you can see progression, can't you? I mean, it's an experiment, fascinating. I'm sure you just spoke about it. I mean, on uh, yesterday, he just like gliding across the pitch, and I just thought he just looked also classy. He's a great player, uh, but I just think that position's so interesting because it's 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 interesting. It's something we haven't seen before, and it could be a catalyst for next season. It could be tremendous. You know, a couple of other players alongside them. That's no disrespect to Endo Fabinho. Uh, but you've got players there, potential ones that are getting spoken about. And I think you're looking at it and thinking, wow, what could that look like? Obviously, we spoke about Nunes. You've seen the emergence of gap call becoming fundamentally important to the, and a really, really good player. So for me, it's not like fizzling out mm -hmm. the season. Yeah. You're looking at potential. It felt could like this it was be fizzling the out a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Could this be the next... So you're looking forward to the end of the season. Could this be like... like you know, when we used to see Ferguson, you know, you suddenly see a new team starting to be developed. You go, well, on, these have got another team on the horizon yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Have we, you know, we going into that sort of stage now where we're looking at next season, looking at this formation? You know, we haven't talked about Kanate. I think he's been outstanding. Yeah, yeah, the way he's on the front foot, he's attacking. He's, you know, he's, he's really, really relishing that role. So for me, potential re emergence of Liverpool uh, in, a, in a different form in a different system with different players but potentially could be as effective as what we've seen previous it's fascinating I also think the, the, the Brentford game away was where a lot of our problems first like were really identified yeah, they, yeah. They, had, they, they bullied us a little bit they had that time when they got yeah. two this loud goals from set piece and then scored off the next one just like stupid things like that where Liverpool looked a little bit frazzled and a bit all over the place it'd be interesting to see now we've done this change with obviously Alexander Arnold playing this this new role that he's in and Liverpool the whole set of changes and a few new players in a few like Oxley Chamberlain scores in that game, for example, he's been he's nowhere near it now. It'll be interesting as a measuring stick because that was what we was, and then we've we've made this change that you've said, and now here's, here's the new net result of it. Because again, Brentford, I thought uh, two away games we've been to their place in the last two seasons and we've really struggled. We we beat them relatively comfortably at home last season, but I think it is it's like a good measuring stick to see where we're at because yeah. they did they 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 
you know, we had we've had a few losses this season where it's been pretty comprehensive, and I know Liverpool got a goal in that game, but it, it still felt like it was a pretty a pretty handy beat. And so it'd be nice to see, right? Here's Trent, here's the new, here's all the new lads, here's, here's Diaz is back, here's Jota, here's Jota back. We've got it all going again. If we can if we can wipe the floor with them, it's a, it's like a, re, a big mark of progression yeah. from A to B. Well, it's a good challenge in that regard, isn't it? Chris? Because Thomas Frank's a good manager. Yeah, yeah, and he so is, back yeah. going back to the away game <laughs> last season where they really identified they were like putting three men on the back post to upset Trent Alexander Arnold, and he will be sat this week where looking at what we're doing and trying to find small little ways, like myopically focusing on two or three little ideas to upset Liverpool, and that's what again that's what I mean. It's a different kind of challenge, and to the point, I think there's. I think we've got them probably a couple of weeks too soon for them to be on the beach yet. They're in ninth, but you know, if we're talking about being able to get into maybe outside chance of Champions League or whatever, they'll be saying the same thing about Conference League and maybe even fringes of Europa. Yeah. A couple of wins for them. One win here might might put them on the beach, but they're not there yet. Yeah, they're, they're not. I think the interesting thing with them and, and specifically what Liverpool have been playing like the last few weeks is we've been dead open. You know about that Nottingham Forest game where we can see from two throw-ins, well, Brentford will take advantage of throw-ins. Yeah, yeah. And we've conceded a lot of free kicks recently in the yeah. last sort of, even in this spell. So although we have been much better on the ball, we, we, we have actually conceded a lot of chances during these games. Obviously, it's a mad 4-3 game. There's a 3-2 game in there. We probably don't really deserve a clean sheet last yeah. night, but for unbelievable goalkeeping and unbelievable defending from the likes of Virgil van Dijk and stuff. So that, for me, is where he'll be looking to focus on. Can he get them in from deb, you know, from set pieces and all that type of stuff? Focus on those types of things. Also, they don't get beat often. You've got the league table in front of you there. I, I think they've only been beat about eight times. Yeah. You draw a lot of games, but they're very hard to beat at the they've same time. They've drawn 14 games, which is more than anyone else in the entire league. Yeah, no one else has drawn more games this season than Brentford. Newcastle have drawn 11. Um, Crystal Palace How many have they lost? And the rights they've only lost eight, eight. And how many have we lost? We have lost nine. I mean, like that that's good, you know. The, and you know, the clock as well, well. The fair top scorer in the league plays for them. I mean, it's, oh, it's, Tony, it, yeah. it's Harland, Kane, Ivan Tony. So, 20, or 20 goals. And it, so, if, if you've got, you know, if you're, you've mentioned before, like, the, the, I think one of the reasons we got away with it a little bit against Forest was because they finished him as poor. I actually think the same against Tottenham. I think they could have scored, you know, they scored three, they could have scored five. Yeah. Like it, I think you'd back Ivan Tony to score some of those. Well, Harry Kane in that game got one chance, scored it, and, and even Tony's a little bit. I know he's some of them are penalties because he's he's a worldy pen taker. Obviously, bad one he missed recently against Newcastle, but they've got someone. He'll be there now. I think Thomas Frank, like you say, there'll be a, a specific game plan that gets Ivan Tony in these positions. And I'll be honest, the pool, the back door hasn't been closed. As I know, we did keep the clean sheets against Fulham, but it was. You know, it was it was squeaky. You know what I mean? It was it was Allison pulling off a couple of worldies, and mm-hmm. you know Van Dijk off the line a little bit. It wasn't like Liverpool was were completely solid. Yeah. So I think they've got to be on the game against Brentford. I think, but I think it's a really tough challenge. If you look at the the games we've got left, the two home games, it's it's um, it's Villa and Brentford. They're both tough games, yeah. like against a de- relatively decent size. And then the away games are two teams fighting for their lives. Well, they've well, got measuring sticks, like you said. Yeah, yeah. You know, just well, shows, that's yeah. a tremendous record they've got there, isn't it? Credit to the manager and how the players are implementing it. Yeah. But they're not parked the bus. No. They're a good team, aren't yeah. they? They're a but they're good very, team. But the very... Um... They attack your weakness, they identify a weakness, yeah, and they smell know, yeah. blood. That game against those with them free kicks, they had it planned, you could yeah. tell. They had it all worked out. Yeah. They were flooding the back post, and then had someone at the front and they hit it to him. And they, they, yeah. They're really smart, they're a really clever team. Yeah. They're like, um, I don't know, they... they, they the almost, you know, the one percent was in sport, gains. the marginal gains. They're all over that kind of stuff. They're really, you know, they're that type of club. They binned off the youth team because they went down the analytics route. They're really, they're, they're, they're a different proposition, and it's gonna be. I think it'll be a tough game. Thomas Frank knows a lot about football. Probably not as much not as, as Sam Allardyce. No, 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 and it's a disappointment for us, and we need and these are things we need to put in our rear view mirror if we want to just. That's establish a mentality them. thing there as well, isn't there? Yeah. You know that Liverpool have to get over because yeah, you've yeah. got two sides, Aston Villa especially, from where they were early this season yeah, with he's Gerard in charge. Job, hasn't he? He's yeah. done an incredible job, yeah. that's right, and you know they're going for something that they probably didn't think was possible, no, and we're going for something. We're still a little bit disappointed that we're not maybe getting Ruby Champions Prize. League. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just in terms of Liverpool, then. Um, Luis Diaz, they start again. 
if he can go, yeah. He, he looked again. He looked he jaded and he tired the other night. And obviously, if you ask him to go Wednesday night, Saturday night, it might be a bit too much for him. Um, but if he's fit, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's got like I don't know. He's got the skills, right? He's got all that, but he's it's, it's tenacity. He's just unbelievable. It's like that. You know, it's just like never give up. There was a couple of times where he looked like he'd lost it. And he just yeah. runs away from it. Yeah. He's happy to boot you if he needs to boot you. You know, he, he's gnarly about it. Um, every we've seen him a few times now off the bench. Obviously, he gets a couple at the start there as well. Um, he looks like he's. It's a shame that the season's about to end because it looks like he's just about to get back into it, and then we're going to cut him off. So I think yeah, and also like I say, um, if he can go, then I would start him. But I wouldn't be shocked if he, if Jürgen's going to try and look after him a little bit. He's I, had a long. It was a long time out that he had. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind, Chris. I don't know about you. He's in our best. If we're playing for yeah. from three, oh, yeah. he's, in, yeah. he's in the best one. Yeah. He is, yeah. He needs to have more goals for his game. Mm-hmm. I think that, like, you could probably, if you were being pessimistic last night, I'd have, I'd have actually liked him to shoot a little bit more. He was trying to bring players in, which normally you applaud, but like he was in a really good position to shoot himself a couple of times when he, he looked got a into bit the too keen area. to get Darwin a goal. Yeah, I think. maybe. Which is no bad thing. But... It. And you know, maybe he's been helping him with the language and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. So he's been kind of buddied up and all that stuff. Maybe that's something there. Maybe he knows a little bit more than the rest of the squad about how. How difficult maybe he's found. It he knows how to say stuff. "run there, lad." Yeah, well, in maybe his natural language. Well, like, um, <laughs> so yeah, look, he's an outstanding footballer. I think everybody knows that, but he's a he's a tempo setter at the same time for yeah. me. And, and I think you need them, don't you? And yeah. I think you know, I don't think we've got one in the middle of the park anymore. Yeah. I think tends to lead in a different way when he's got mm-hmm. the ball. But like someone who's going to go out there and ju- he's just a dog. Like, you know what I mean? You need people with just fighting them, don't yeah. you, to set that like tempo? Suarez, like, yeah, Suarez, yeah, he's got yeah, exactly. that, that yeah. spirit. I just think, I just think watching him last couple of games, you realise what we've missed because he's just absolutely tremendous, and yet he's absolutely one of the first names on the sheet when he's uh, when he's fit. And he next season he's going to be absolutely pivotal, pivotal football for us next year. Dependent. I mean, Klopp talked about it saying it's not really a problem as such when you've got lots of really good players all fit and available. I mean, it's the opposite to the problem that he's had all season. So yeah. I reckon he probably sees it as quite a welcome return. Um, but Nick Gapo, Jota, Diaz, actually all in really good form, and Salah's Salah. Mm-hmm. That's the that's going to be the interesting question. And this, I, I, we had a big chat about Darwin earlier. We may as well bring it in as well. I don't feel like there was enough from him in midweek to go. You mentioned Gapo again. Yeah, of course. But there will be an interesting conversation around Jota and Diaz because to Chris's point, Jota scores the goals. Yeah. Diaz seems to fit the whole thing perfectly. But Klopp's clearly favoured Jota in the last in the last few weeks. Yeah, and I think he will continue to as well. Um, obviously, Mo's going to start, but even even last night, team, you see Mo come off the bench, come off mm. the pitch. I mean, he, he wasn't playing well, you know. He, he wasn't having his best game, far from it. So, you want that competition up there. You want that competition up top. And I think also, like Sir Curtis Jones, I, I'll be honest, yeah. I'm not a big Curtis Jones fan. <clears throat> and you know, for me, you're scraping the bottom of a battle when he's starting to play games, but. Last few games, I've had to go, listen, kid's playing great. Yeah. He's playing really well. He's enjoying his football. He's involved all the time. He's making things happen. And what we've started doing again is turning and running at defences. You know, and that's something, obviously, Diaz brings to us out on the wing. But uh, I think getting Curtis on the ball and just letting him, allowing him to do that. I think I don't know whether that's because Trent's coming inside, so it's freeing them up to be a little bit more adventurous in midfield. But, yeah, it's... Uh, Good stuff. What are we doing then, Steve? Lineups. I, th- I think the interesting moment is I think Robertson comes back in for Costa, so I think that's a given. Um, it's whether he thinks George. Can I just ask actually on that the was harsh from getting taken off. I thought the other yeah. because I didn't did think he did anything wrong necessarily. But then Robbo come on and put in a world he crossed the first <laughs> touch he had, and you go, oh, okay, fair enough. I think it's a level. I think it was. I think it was. I, th- I think it was more that he was just resting Robertson. Yeah. Um, so I think he plays. It's whether he, it's the Henderson ones for me. It's, it, does he think Jordan Henderson can, can go again? He obviously, um, he left him out. Uh, he's, he's played Harvey Elliott in there, hasn't he? When, when Henderson wasn't fit, um, it's the physicality against Brentford. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the worry. I would like it. I think I, it should be it should be Henderson. Yeah, it's got to be. But he, again, he played ninety yesterday, and he, he looked knackered. You know, I think he had a shot from like twenty odd yards because he just couldn't be asked run anymore. He just, well, he, he went down, didn't he? I was like, oh god, I hope he's not injured. And then the ball dropped too, and he just yeah, he just decided off. to lob the goalie for yeah, the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just just not 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 quite as successfully. So it depends how he is, but. Yeah, I, I think I think it's the I think Robertson comes in. I think it's the same in field, and I think Gakpo starts ahead of Darwin. I think he will go with Diaz if he can, um, with Salah on the other side. I, I think that's what he'd like to do. But again, I I I'd hear him to be cautious with Diaz. If there's any worry about him, then 
listen, ultimately, next season's more important than the end of this one. So you, you would wrap in cotton wool a bit. But again, going back to the Brentford thing and the thing you just said about Diaz having this dog in him, I think that could be important against these. I think it could be that yeah. kind of game where you need where, where you need a little bit of that. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'd do. I don't think there's any problem. Again, if you bring in Diaz and Nunes into the game at the moment, I still think Nunes probably suits when games are getting a bit ragged toward the end. You know, maybe things open up a little bit more. That's how we were using him at the start of the season. He's never really truly developed beyond that. And you're right on the Diaz stuff. I want him to play every game between now and the end of the season, so that makes kind of sense. Jot has been playing well from the start. He's been scoring important goals for us, and Gapo has been absolutely class hasn't he so I don't mind that the Henderson stuff the Elliot stuff's only I think if you need someone you want that physicality for later in the game because if Hendo's knackered which which period of the game is he most useful to you because you bring a Milner in to shut the game down and is Milner enough mm. to shut the game down do you maybe go with Elliot and go right let's just go and try and get this game won in 45 and then shut it down mm. that's the only consideration but I think Henderson will get the will get the nod um Let's have some score predictions then. Nick, what do you think? Uh, I'm feeling quite confident, actually. I'm, unfortunately, judging by the defending the other night, I think they will score. Yeah. I think we'll, I think we will concede again. But I'm confident we'll uh, put a couple in the other end. So I'm going to go with 2-1. Nice. Yeah. Mm. 3-1. Great, Chris. 3-2 to us. I think it's going to be a wild. Last one. minute, we winner. shared a mind Engine, in the last few time weeks. Winner. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that, definitely. I just want us to score the last goal. I don't care what <laughs> as long as the winning and the last goal. Yeah, go on, Steve. Yeah, I'll go two one as well. I think they'll be tight. I think they're a good team. Yeah. I've, I feel I feel a three two on this one. Maybe not quite in the same forest vein, but it'd be an interesting test for them because you're right, they're gonna exploit set pieces and all, all, all those kind of situations. It's got the hallmarks of uh, we score three, they score two, and you walk out going, Oh fucking hell. That was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll look, I'll take it, I'll take a clip. Do you miss a chance in the last few minutes that yeah. they really could have scored Allison's world? Needs to pull a save out. Just win the game, Liverpool, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, right, cool. That is the preview. Thank you so much for joining us.